G'day guys, welcome to True Footy Podcast 74. Today I'm joined by a very special guest in Cardman22, young up and coming YouTuber in the AFL scene with over 7,000 subscribers. He's kindly made time today to join the show and we talk a little bit about footy generally, his beloved St. Kilda and also the footy landscape on YouTube right now. But before we get into that, I do need to give you a special message from our sponsors Manscaped. Manscaped are one of the global leaders in male grooming products and they're here to help you level out your male grooming routine. They're currently offering a product called the Perfect Package 3.0 which includes the Lawn Mower 3.0, which is a waterproof and cordless body trimmer. And part of the package, you also get all these other liquid formulations as well. It's cutting edge technology. It comes with a ceramic blade to reduce cutting incidents, but it also comes with something really cool called the Crop Preserver, which is little ball, moisturizer, and deodorant all in one. If you're a young man out there who spends many a night on the dance floor sweating it up, these are the products for you. I'm telling you about all this today because with True Footy, you can get 20% off their elite products using the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word, 20% off their products, and you get free shipping, so it's an absolute deal. There are a lot of Manscaped ads right now. There's a lot of creators with a discount code. I'd really appreciate if you use the True Footy one specifically so that I sent you, you'd really be helping out my channel. And on top of that, you're getting a world-class product, which I use myself. So they're worth checking out at manscaped.com, but for now, let's get into the podcast. All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to a new True Footy podcast, number 74. Uh, it's a special one today, joined by a, uh, a YouTube guest. First time we've had a YouTube guest, I reckon, since uh, Druzy and Swoop Luke back in like mid-2020. But I'm joined today by the illustrious Carman22, man's making waves on the YouTube scene at the moment, um, setting the absolute standard for work rate. Cardi, welcome to the channel. How are you doing? No, I'm doing right. I'm doing pretty good there, Jesse. Thanks for the uh, the the uh, the featuring me on the uh, the channel. Good to be on the True Footy Podcast. It's one of my favourite podcasts on on YouTube. I've got to say, up there with the the best AFL podcast. So an honour to get on. Oh, thanks, mate. Appreciate the uh, the big rap. It has it has been a long time coming. We've sort of been talking about this for a while now, um, but we've just kind of been bumbling away on our own channels. I think we've collabed once on your channel, um, but yep. it's good to finally have you on. Today, uh, I want to talk a little bit about, about a few things, footy in general, because um, I know you're a big Saints fan, and uh, they're an interesting topic in the AFL right now. Um, we can yeah. talk about the league generally, but also I want to get into a little bit about you as a creator and, and how you got into that and stuff as well. But um, before all that, Cardi, I do want to talk about something quite real. Um, I, want to know, I want to know something about you. So you have recently become a man, if I'm not mistaken. You've turned 18. That's happened in the last couple yes. of weeks. How's yes, it feel? It has. How are you feeling? Well, I think that's six days ago I turned 18. So yeah, I, don't, I, I don't feel anything different, honestly, not going to lie. Um, I, I don't know if I should uh, talk about what happened on my 18th birthday. <laughs> a bit of an, do you know about it or not? I don't. Anyone and, tell uh, yeah, it's up to you. This is, um, this well, is for all ages, but go for it. <laughs> I'm sure people know. Well, I was on a uh, live stream, uh, decided to do a live stream countdown till I turned 18, right? Brave. Um, then I got to 18. Everyone in the, I got to like 230 in the chat. It was like bu bubbling. Huge. Um, people in the chat were just like, oh, go get alcohol. But I didn't have anything like downstairs, nothing in the fridge, nothing planned. There were like two beers in the yeah. fridge. I had that. They were expired. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then all of them were like, oh, surely get some more. So I was like, fuck it. I'll get, I'll get vodka. Um, and then I had a few people on the Discord. I think it was Mitch Ryan. It might have been Bitter Footy, UCAT, Geordie. A couple of yeah. them, they just kept egging me on, drinking, <laughs> drinking. And I, I had like 12 shots and I completely was like, I was, <laughs> I was so cooked. Um, that's what I like. And I had, to, I had to go to hospital afterwards. It was actually oh. that bad. Oh, that's not but, good. No, nah, I, I, I don't remember anything that happened from after I, uh, after I sort of just collapsed until when I got to the hospital and then it was just a bit of a blur there, but I missed the uh, the footy on the Thursday night. I just watched it at home because I didn't feel great, but not like yeah. I missed out on much. It's a pretty crap game. Wait, so um, paint the picture for me here. Did you pass out live? I don't know if I passed out live, but I, <laughs> I've got the uh, stream replay. I looked back on it um, a couple of days ago and I just, like I was trying to get up in my chair, but I just completely fell over. It was pretty funny. <laughs> um, and oh. the, the funny thing is the, uh, the stream was still going on till like, when I got back from the hospital, like 7 a.m., it was still running. So oh, my God. It was God. something to, uh, yeah, not a great oh, good, moment. but Good for the watch time. <laughs> yeah, good for the watch time. I, I saw a few people in the live chat that'd be like, oh, I've been here since the start and the like seven and a half hours on the stream. So, you, you take a little bit of watch time whenever you can. That's incredible, mate. I, I did actually notice because I, I noticed you streamed and then I noticed, uh, did you, you private it, the stream? So, is that not viewable anymore? Um, well, yeah, it's not viewable 
And the, the, the funny thing is, the, the stream actually got blocked because through a Discord call, um, I don't remember how or when, but apparently the the, the, the stream was blocked through uh, Cricket Australia. So, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take that it's blocked because that means I can't actually yeah, show anyone on the stream and I've got an, a proper excuse for it, which is uh, wow. yeah, something I don't want to show too many people. Yeah, fair enough, man. Well, uh, that, that was uh, quite a story. I... Um I imagine it's a good cautionary tale because I'm sure there's a lot of under 18 listeners here of um, the, the right yeah. and wrong way to spend your 18th and it's good to have a good time but um, if you're ending up on hospital in hospital yeah. rather, um, yeah, not ideal true. <laughs> nah that's it man oh well um, so uh, Cardman22 over 7,000 subscribers um, absolutely killing it at the moment mate but uh, for the, I'm sure there's a small minority of people listening and watching this might not be familiar with you do you want to tell people uh, what it is you do on YouTube um, well, yeah, what I do on YouTube, pretty much, uh, similar to what you do, Jesse, I just, you know, do footy videos just like you. Um, I started making, uh, footy card videos. I still do it occasionally, but now I sort of diversed into bigger, like a wider range of AFL content, like challenge videos, prediction videos. Um, what else do I do? Vlogs. Um, sort of like, sort of what Caden does in a way, just like, um, entertaining, entertaining footy videos. Um, not really in a way that you do them where you sort of um, try and be, uh, you know, knowledgeable with your footy content. I'm sort of like, don't, I don't, uh, you know, tell everyone that I know a lot about footy. I just, you know, try and make it entertaining for people. Yeah, that's cool. Um, you're probably selling yourself a little bit short there, but um, I do think it's actually a good model to go down um, as well. When you when you sort of, you don't want to peg yourself as an expert because then um, you yeah, true. As soon as as soon as people think you're wrong, then um, they don't value your content anymore. So you've obviously got a lot of a very loyal uh, subscriber, as I would say. You you get regular streams on. Lots of people engage with your content. Um, so you're definitely doing something right. I do kind of want to put a little pin in the YouTube stuff. We'll come back to it. Um, but after all, we are a football podcast. Um, yep. You're a big Saints man, Cardi. So why don't you uh, why don't you tell us why Saint Kilda? Is it a family thing? Yeah, it's a family thing. It lo- just like pretty much everyone else. Uh, it always comes down to a family thing. I'm pretty sure that, I don't know the full reasoning, but I'm pretty sure my uh, grandpa, he came to Australia and I think the first suburb or the first town he actually lived in was St Kilda and then it just sort of went on from there. Yeah. Um, then my dad was a Saints fan. Um, he was born 1973, so he still hasn't seen a flag, which has been unfortunate. And yeah, he sort of just tagged it along and I became a Saints fan. I was a Saints fan ever since I was born. Like I was going to the games when I was a baby, I think. So I've been a member for a while now, but seen, a, you know, the, the ups and downs, mainly the downs um, in the last 10 years, I'd say. Very true. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, yeah, the Saints are one of those sides with uh, an elusive sort of or a long premiership drought rather. But that being said, I mean, they haven't gone too terribly. They're kind of like the dogs in the sense, um, uh, the dogs flag aside, they've still been competitive. Like you've, you've seen them get bloody close to a flag. But what are, uh, yeah. uh, by my math, you're born in uh, 2003, but uh, what, what are your earliest St. Kilda memories? Like, when, when did you really get into it? Um, well, I, would, I wouldn't I would say I remember anything um, in the first probably four or five years of going to the footy, like in 2006, 2007. Yeah. I think that's when Grant Thomas was still a coach. But then yeah. I think 2008, 2009, I'd be going to, with my dad to pretty much all home games. I, I remember that. Like, I know I was still a little kid, but I sort of understood what it meant uh, but I guess it's because you know back then we were actually a good side I think we won 19 games in a row back then so mm. we were a good side then I guess I probably didn't uh, I guess appreciate it as much now because now I'm sort of been a Saints man for longer and um, it would be better if I you know experienced a 19-0 and season now than back when I sort of just started following footy I'd say. Yeah, that's very true. The um, the downturn is what makes the upturn so special because I'm lucky enough yep. to see the Eagles win in 06 in person. And while at the time that was the best day of my life, I think the the way the club fell apart and then came back in 2018, it just meant 10 times more to me. Um, so, I mean, I, I think you're blessed with St. Kilda. Like, they're not a massively resource club, but they, uh, they've they got a good culture and they're, they've they generally you know been competitive. And at the moment, they're... Well, I want to say they're going all right. They're a little bit of a mixed bag at the moment, Cardi. Um, we, we, as we do record this, so I'm not sure when I'll get this out. So this, it could be after round six by the time people are watching this. But at the top of round five, they're sitting two and three, seventy-one percent. What have you made of the Saints so far this year? Um, sort of just underwhelming, really. Yeah. Uh, I went to this the Giants game in Sydney. Um, it was very tough. Uh, 
battle in that one. Like, I think we played a pretty good game of footy. We had a few injuries as well coming into that game. And I, I, I did see a few people um, were sort of ruling us out of that game. But we ended up winning that. And I thought, geez, we're going to be... We'll be on this season. We play Melbourne. Uh, we were very lucky to only lose by three goals. Our, our skills were uh, absolutely shocking. And then sort of just in the last few weeks, bar the, uh, the West Coast game, we've just been dreadful. Just We just don't don't turn up. Like when we can see the first few goals of the game, we sort of just drop our heads and just sort of just give in to, the, uh, to losing. We just don't really try, which has been disappointing. Yeah, it, it must be because we know the St Kilda side um, had a massive run last year under Brett Ratton, uh, won a final, um, their first finals appearance in, what was it, nine years, I think, and then uh, to win a final as well, that, that was a massive achievement. Um, so plenty of optimism going into this year. We had a question on the Drew Footy Show last week. Um, to what extent is it like the injuries that St Kilda have are clearly there. You had no Ryder and Marshall. Marshall comes back in and then you guys play a good game. But do you think yeah. it's more than that? Do you think it's more than injuries? Are the players just maybe not like have their heads in the game right now? Um, yeah, probably. I, I, you can't really blame injuries like the loss of Marshall or Jones or whatever or Ryder for an 86-point loss or a 75-point loss against the Bombers. Like It's got to be more than that. Maybe it's in like the players' minds because lately... Um, the player's been copying quite a bit for not performing, especially Brad Hill. Like, mm. past few weeks, he's probably copped the most of any player, I would say. Like, um, yeah, even his wife had to get involved, and I'm pretty sure he's now in Perth, sort of just to oh, really? cool his mind, you know, get rid of everything, get rid of all the, uh, the negativity, um, which has been a bit disappointing. Um, sort of just to see the fans, um, the way they behaved after that. But, um, yeah, so I think it's probably more than that, but... Yeah, I don't know. How much faith do you have that uh, they can turn the corner? They got a big test uh, against the Power in Adelaide. They, I think they won this fixture last year. Yeah. Do you still think they're in the, uh, in the snapshot for finals, or you've lost confidence? Um, no, I haven't lost confidence. Um, definitely after last week, I was. I think I had them finishing fifth or sixth. I actually thought, oh yeah, we, we'd be we're going to be good again. But after that game, I'm still not. I'm not losing faith because the Saints are quite a. Um, an inconsistent, unpredictable side. You never know which Saints uh, lineup can turn up one day. You could have the West, the game against the Eagles, where we, uh, yeah, came back from 33 points down, or you could have the the team that we played against the Bombers and the Tigers. So um, we've got Port next or well, this week. I don't see us winning that. Like I wouldn't be surprised if we get up. I think we've got a we've got Marshall and Ryder back. I'm pretty sure. Wow. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if away from the uh, home fans. Um, no one's expecting us to win. Usually when we come into a game as underdogs, we perf- we actually perform well. Um, so I wouldn't yeah, be surprised if we actually get up. Yeah, I mean, the Eagles were on the receiving end of that just a couple of weeks ago. Everyone wrote off St. Yeah. Kilda. I-, I wasn't prepared to write them off because uh, I knew they would respond. Um, and yep. in, in the hindsight of that game, um, as people who subscribe to True Footy know, I was very filthy on the Eagles, very Eagles-centric yep. around how bad they were. But... In terms of the Saints in that game, that was a team that was definitely engaged. Um, didn't look like a team that had fitness issues. The intensity was there. They were right on the Eagles from uh, pretty much the whole game. Um, was, I think the Eagles dropped off, but uh, it didn't look like a team that had sort of dropped their heads and given up. Um, so, yeah. I mean, hopefully we see that again uh, in Adelaide this weekend. I want to talk about maybe some positives for the Saints this year. Um, I have a video coming out tomorrow, right, uh, as of the time we record this, and it's every club's uh, AFL MVP this year, so the most valuable player. When when this guy's doing well, it's a barometer. I've chosen Jack Steele for the Saints. Is this something you would agree with? Do you think there's any other nominations? So you're saying if this, like, best player so far this year, or if this player is playing well like the Saints are going to win or yeah so the most valuable in the sense that um, it's it's really valuable when this guy's on form I, I nominated Jack Steele is there anyone else or do you think Jack Steele is the one yeah well Jack Steele I mean he's been our best player I'd say definitely all season the last few games and yep. in the, the Essendon and Richmond game he was our best player um, he's sort of like the Paddy Cripps of Carlton back when they were horrible you know just <laughs> the best the best player in the team gets all the ball but really um, no one else actually puts in the effort and does anything else. So I, I'd almost go someone maybe like Marshall. I mean, he was when he was playing against um, West Coast, we got up. So I think it shows how important having a good ruckman is. And even someone like Brad Hill, he's, he's a confidence player. When the team's actually up and firing, he has a really good game. Like he had a really good game against the Eagles. Um, probably one of the best games I've seen him play. But then 
when we're not uh, playing good footy, the Saints, um, then Brad Hill just drops and loses confidence. So probably one of those two players, I'd say. Yeah, I think those are good nominations as well. Um, you guys have traded in heavy over the last couple of years. Uh, one player that I probably haven't monitored that closely is Dougal Howard. Um, how's he gone? Um, yeah, he's been probably our best defender in the for the past couple of years. Just super consistent, I'd say. Like, yeah, um, yeah, definitely a real asset to the the club. And one of the few positives out of this year, I'd say, he's been probably the top three players I'd have to say for the Saints. Yeah, yeah, that's a big wrap. Um, I want you to put your list management hat on now, Cardi. Um, I think looking at the Saints squad, I think it's fairly well-rounded. I don't think you have any clear weaknesses. Um, you've got good rucks, good young midfield. Um, you've got Max King yeah. up forward. Um, you've got some good small forwards, uh, Jay Gresham when he's fit. Not that that's, that's often. But if, uh, if you had to, if you could recruit someone, and maybe let's keep it realistic because we could just go Dusty Martin, but is there a type yeah, yeah. of player you'd love the Saints to add to their list and, and who, what sort of player would that be? I don't know. I just someone, someone who you can just rely on every week. Yeah. I don't know though. Who who would it be? Because like as you said before, we're pretty we're pretty uh, well balanced. I'd say like when we've got yeah. our best list, um, we're a pretty good side. Like when we've got our two best ruckmen, definitely. If you know when we don't have the t- our two best ruckmen, it'd be nice to have like a Gorn or a Grundy um, instead of like a Paul Hunter third game player. But very true. Um, is there a position yeah, to the ground, like a maybe a half back or you know small forward? I, sp- I mean, with Gresham injuries, maybe. <laughs> oh, I mean, you got Dan Butler. I completely forgot about that bloke for yeah, a second. Butler, so, yeah, Butler. No, yeah, exactly. Not really he's, been out of, he's been out of form this year. That's that's the only problem. True. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe someone in the midfield. I'd say they can help with uh, Jack Steele. Mm. Who would be a who's a player like that is like not not in contract that we could technically get next year. Well, I don't know even about even the contracts. Well, I, don't think it matter- I don't think it matters with the contract. Someone yeah. like a... Even a young player like Sam Walsh, he'd be nice to, to, to grab. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. Or an Adam Chera. That's that's someone who is actually... Yeah, Adam Chera. Yeah. Um, I think he's yeah. going to be uh, potentially A-plus midfielder down the track. But uh, yeah, I think yeah. all in all, the Saints, their issues aren't talent. Um, I, I mean, a lot of their players are young. So someone like a Max King is probably like five years off peaking, which is scary because he's, he's already great to watch. Yeah, he's already um, a really good player. Just exactly. needs to improve on his uh, goal kicking. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But uh, yeah, hopefully things pick up for the Saints for you, mate. Um, speaking about the league generally, um, we've seen a, a season where you know higher scoring. Uh, people are saying it's more entertaining to watch in decades. Uh, what have you made of football as a product this year? Are you really enjoying the new rules and stuff? Um, yeah, I, I definitely prefer uh, footy this year than the past few years. I'd say, like, the, I think round one, we had a pretty high scoring. Um, uh, round, I think it's definitely a lot uh, more appealing to watch footy when it's more free flowing, high scoring than you know defensive. Go okay, like twenty twenty. I know it was shorter quarters, but even even if they were longer quarters, I feel like the game was played more defensively. For sure. Like a lot of the scores, um, like a lot of teams could win games under scoring when they're scoring under fifty points, which wouldn't happen this year. Which um, but yeah, I, I think the the man in the mark rule as well opens up the game, um, which is a good thing. Like at the start. A lot of people are skeptical over it, but um, I feel like it's a pretty good rule, um, and I don't mind it. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think I think the best byproduct of it is um, we're seeing these tall forwards um, have more of an impact. Before they were too easily nullified when when you had uh, numbers back and stuff like that. I think it's yeah having yeah. an effect on someone like McGovern. Uh, it goes against his his strengths, um, as I've noticed as an Eagles fan. But you know, someone like a Max King and even Oscar Allen, these guys are kicking bags. Um, both had bags of five this year. I don't know if that's possible last year. You know, I think a five-goal yeah. haul was massive last year, and now we're seeing yeah, it exactly. um, quite consistently. Harry Mackay has bobbed up with bags of seven and yep. four and stuff like that. So, yep. yeah, it, I think I think there's a lot of positives to it. But um, I'll get some predictions off you, Cardi. Um, we are far too uh, far away for this, but I, I think it's always a fun fun exercise to do at any point of the season. But I want to know who you think are the main contenders this year. Um, and I'll, I'll get a predicted grand final from you based on what we've seen after five rounds. All right. This is a, always a tough question. I get this question asked quite a, uh, a lot on streams and all that. Um, I, You've got to have Richmond up there. Like they mm. were very dominant, very impressive after quarter time against the Saints. I feel like they played their best footy in a couple of years. Um, Port Adelaide, can't write them off. They were good um, against Richmond and against Carlton as well. The Bulldogs, they're up there, definitely. 5-0. Oh. 
I, I, you, didn't you have them 13th or something? Like you completely written them off in your early predictions or something. I'll take this opportunity to clarify that point. So my logic every year is that there's going to be a team that bottles it and falls out of the top yeah. eight. Because generally there is. Um, don't yeah, know if there is yeah. one off the top of my head right now. Uh, I mean, maybe St. Kilda. Hopefully that's yeah, not the based case. Based off uh, current form, I feel like the Saints are the uh, the team that... They're the, new, uh, they're the Melbourne of 2019. That's what I've been saying. Um, hopefully yeah. I'm wrong, but... Hopefully it's not that bad. I don't think it's quite that level yet, but um, yeah, not fingers yet. crossed. Yeah, um, but for the Bulldogs, it wasn't so much that I looked at their list and thought, nah, not enough talent. I just thought, you know, why add an A-grade midfielder to a team that's um, already got an A-grade True. midfield when you when you True. need forwards? I, I think the forward, the, the rules have aided them in the sense that um, what was previously a forward line that didn't look great on paper is starting to, you know, Josh Bruce is coming in and kicking 10 goals because he's got more space. Aaron Norton is an out-and-out star. Um, things have worked for them in a sense, but I, I probably, well, I definitely got it wrong. Um, the midfield has been sensational this year. I think Bont's arguably the best player in the comp with Dusty at the moment. Um, so it, yeah, I, I'll cop it cause I got it wrong and I'm never, ever tipping a team to bottle out like again, <laughs> because it, there's no benefit to it. Cause if no one cares if you get yeah. it wrong, but if you, uh, or no one cares if you're too conservative, but if you make a dumb call on someone like the Bulldogs, you look like an idiot. So um, yeah. Personally, I think the dogs are up there with Richmond. Like they're probably my one and two, and then yeah, Port same. probably next. I don't know if the dogs will sustain it for the whole season. Though, like we haven't seen enough of the dogs yet, but I think yep. it's safe to say they're probably top four at the moment. Yeah. Um, I'd probably have if I had a top four. I'd probably have the dogs, Richmond, Port Adelaide, and then you've got teams like West Coast, Geelong, um, Brisbane, and Melbourne mm. making that fourth spot. I, I still don't know who it's going to be. West Coast are looking all right, though. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they make the f- top four, but usually they seem to underperform end, end of the season and finish fifth, something like they, yeah, something like that might happen again this year. Yeah, exactly right. I think the Eagles, along with those teams you mentioned, are probably just outside that top bracket. Um, they probably need to go up a few gears before they, they really challenge, but they're, po- they're obviously capable, so fingers crossed. Sweet. Now, I uh, will cycle back to a little bit of the YouTube stuff, Cardi, because... Um, how yep. long have you been doing this for uh, now? It feels like a while. Well, I, I, I did start the channel four years ago, but for yep. the first two years, I wasn't serious at all. Like, just just casually, a, a video a week, no editing, no... Like, I knew nothing about YouTube, really, just for a bit of fun. But uh, I'd say mid-2019 is where I started to take it a little bit more seriously. Um, I sort of, instead of just doing uh, the footy car videos, which I started off doing, I decided to expand. I think I made a couple of vlogs, Goal King Challenge. And then I did a couple of those compilation videos similar to, remember, remember that guy, Pipstar? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah I, I was like, you know what? He's getting views, why not give it a go? And I think um, after the first day, I got like 6,000 views and a couple of weeks later, it blew my channel up to 1,000 subs. And that That's sort of incredible. what kickstarted my channel seriously, which is, which is good. You are very smart on YouTube, I'll say for you. Like you like the ability to look at what other people are doing and then transplant it to your own channel and make it work is like half the battle with this thing. So that's one thing I've noticed about you. You're very good uh, with your titles and thumbnails um, and and the, the topics that you choose as well. Like you, you chose like a quite a obscure one the other day. It was like, uh, what, how, what is the most predominant color in footy jumpers? That did well, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. When I, I just had the idea like randomly, I'm like, geez, I need video ideas. I need something that no one's ever done before. I'm like, Will this be a terrible idea? Will this flop? I'm like, well, the Guernsey videos are doing well on my channel. Why not see how it goes? And yeah, it's, I think it's a two of 10 or a three of 10. So it's done pretty well. Damn, that's nice. I, uh, yeah, like you, you strike me as a bit of a, a student of YouTube because you seem to observe what works, you apply it. And then if it works, you, you hammer it. And that's exactly what yeah. you're going to do. So uh, it's obviously yeah. serving you really well. Were you, um, because obviously you're like to nine years, 10 years younger than me. Um, we grew yeah. up in a different generation, so I never grew up uh, watching YouTube. I pretty much found True Geordie in like 2017. Um, and then, yeah, so I was like 24 at the time. But I take it you grew up watching YouTube. Who were your inspirations? Who did you love watching? And were you another Caden McDonald fan? I know Drewsy was. Uh, uh, yeah, I was a Caden McDonald fan. Not as like big in 20... I think I... Was, I don't know. I think 27 and I started watching. I wasn't as big. Like yeah. I'd watched the occasional video and I think in 2018 as well. But when I started sort of starting to try and like starting to properly put in effort in YouTube and actually take it seriously. That's when I started watching him um, mm. more. And yeah, 
Yeah, yeah well, he's that, definitely been an inspiration for sure. Absolutely. Um, I think like I think that's true of any YouTuber who sort of wants to look at the blueprint of who's who's killing it right now. Um, Caden McDonald in 2019 was absolutely smashing. He, he's still doing great, but um, but yeah, I think even yeah. he will say that 2019 was the year everything kind of clicked for him as well. So yeah, the best thing you can do is sort of observe what guys like he are doing um, and take inspiration from it. But I mean, you're a young man, so you're like we said, 18 years old. Um, are you are you at uni? Did you go to uni? Um, apply for it. I, yeah, I, I was doing uni this year, but um, uh, the sort of the it's a bit of a I can't really explain it very well, but um, I'm back July, so I've got like two months off yeah. at the moment. So okay, yeah, I guess it. yeah, yeah. So at the moment, I guess I've just been putting a little bit more effort into YouTube, making an extra video a week, sort of just taking the ride because the momentum's you know doing well for me at the moment. So why not you know take full um, full advantage yeah. of it. That's sick, man. I'd love to hear that. Um, I mean, I would never talk to anyone going to uni, but I mean, the, you got to strike while the iron's hot, so to speak. And you, yep. you strike me as someone who must be clearly very motivated because uh, like I said, your work rate, your consistency, like if you go to your channel and look at the banner and it says four to five uploads a week, like I remember first seeing that and going, I could never commit to that. Um, yep. So like you've obviously got some something bubbling away in you that, that keeps it going. W- what motivates you as a young man... Um, you know, like what? What? Uh, what are you doing this for? What? What makes you work this hard? Um. Well, Pritch, I don't know. Well, yeah, with the four to five videos a week, I don't think I've ever actually been uploading every week four to five videos a week. Yeah. A few, oh, like I sort of cheat with a couple of streams, put them up, call yeah. them videos and all that. But I don't know. It's just you know, being. I feel like if I stop uploading, which has happened a couple times. Like a, f- a few weeks, I haven't uploaded. If I've got other priorities, that yeah. uh, the channel sort of just—I'm like, afraid that it will just die if I don't upload in you know, like a week or something like that. So I just want to, you know, stay consistent. Um, and you know, during the footy season as well, you've got to do a tipping video. You've got to have a stream. You've got to do two other videos as well. Like it just for for my the fans because that that's what they want. So yeah, there's definitely a, a drive to. Yeah, motivate me to make more videos. That's cool. I, I can relate to that. There's a there's a fear of channel death when when you take a bit of time off YouTube. I, I find it hard to to yeah. stop in the summer, and then I, I always find it hard to come back as well. But um, yeah, you, you just feel like yeah, my channel is die if I stop. Um, yeah. and it it sounds negative, but it is a really good motivator. It stops you slacking off a bit. But in terms of like the future, man, like uh, you you must take this seriously. Is this something you would love to do for a career? Well, it'd be nice to do. Mm this as full time because right now it's obviously not full time I do make a bit of money off it which is at yeah. the moment my sort of my part time job I guess you could say but um, yeah it'd be nice if I get to where Caden was in 2019 work with the AFL that'd mm. be um, a main goal but yeah just really just see where it takes me at the moment just um, yeah I don't have like a some you know something in mind that I want to do but I just wouldn't mind continuing yeah, for sure, man. I think that's a healthy attitude. Um, it's hard to throw all your eggs in the basket when uh, it's not making heaps of money yet. Um, yeah, but but yeah. I mean, I, th- I think at the rate you're going, you're, you're growing really fast at the moment. I, your predictions, your tips video today, that, that's smashing it. Is that a one of 10? Well, it's up there. The, the tipping videos, I'm, I'm very surprised they've actually done it right. I reckon it's just because um, of the... Uh, the way I'm doing them, yeah, I think it's a one of ten. Yeah, it is. Jeez, mm. um, I wasn't expecting the tipping videos to do well when I started them, but I, um, yeah, I, I added this little thing called the big calls, and if I yeah, get a that. number of them incorrect, then people comment down punishments I've got to do. So that's I feel like everyone's just waiting for my next tipping video just to comment down their punishment to see me suffer. That's um, <laughs> which not all the time I want to do, but yeah, it, it's doing well for me at the moment. So why not continue? Yeah, for sure, man. I think uh, I think that's really good. I, I should clarify for the listeners who don't have a YouTube channel, um, one of 10 means that when you upload a video, it shows you how that video is tracking against your last 10 uploads. So a one of 10 means it's gone better than any of your last 10 videos. So uh, just for anyone yeah. to clarify that, when we say one yeah. of 10, two of 10, that's, that's really good. So um, yeah, you're, uh, you're thriving at the moment, mate. Um, and uh, yeah, got a lot of momentum. Um, you do a lot of varied content. You, uh, I think, I think we all kind of look at the Caden McDonald because he's 
incredibly versatile. He does his parodies, he does his podcasts, yeah, his short yeah. videos. He just does everything. He, he's a very talented man. But is there is there something in particular that you really you love sinking your teeth into? What's your favorite con- kind of content to make? Favorite content to make, probably. I think it. I think Caden might have a similar answer. I'd probably go something like the uh, the challenges, like the goal kicking challenges. They're yeah. really fun to, to film, to edit. Um, you know, you can throw around the music, the uh, the different effects, the graphics. I would say if going on the other end of the spectrum, the, the videos I like the least to make, um, or probably like, I wouldn't say the tipping videos. They're a bit boring to like chip away at editing, but I'd say. Mm. Probably like, I guess tear makers, they're pretty boring. They're, I don't do them as much now, but back then, they, mm. were, they were pretty boring to make and edit, but they got the views, so you, you take true. it. Yeah, that's true. You've um, you've been collabing with young Mitchie Ryan, another uh, up-and-coming uh, teenage YouTube star in this scene. Um, yep. No, he's a very, very good fella, um, but also makes great content. What's that been like to have someone to share that with? Uh, I can kind of relate. i got Drew's, and I can say it makes it a lot more fun, but what's that been yeah. like for you guys? No, it's been uh, it's been good because um, yeah, I don't know where I would have been at this point of my time if I didn't have someone else sort of to make videos with. Um, I don't think I would have been as big as I am now. Definitely, Mitch has helped out, and Mitch is doing very well for his channel at the moment. I think he's four point five k, but it's yeah, it's it's good to have someone to make videos with. Um, you know, you can bounce back ideas. You know, and yeah, definitely collabing helps growing uh, each other's channel, which is good. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think you could see um, even when Caden j- uh, joined forces with Kuko, when he got him on board, you could see that they really enjoyed what they were doing. Um, and yeah. that obviously just paid off tenfold for, yeah, for their respective yeah, channels. Yeah, it's definitely and, a lot more enjoyable when you've got exactly. someone else to make videos with or share ideas, work with. Like sometimes uh, Mitch and I would, you know, edit videos together and we'd just talk about YouTube for a bit and just talk about other stuff, which is always good to have someone else you can talk to. Yeah, that's it. Because, um, yeah, m- people might not understand who don't do this. Like, uh, I mean, we probably don't, either of us have many friends that we can talk to about YouTube because it's not that yeah. relatable, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, having Drew's as well, we can just talk about like YouTube analytics or, you know, video <laughs> ideas or also someone just to keep you accountable. Like, if you're feeling a bit slack, um, I, like, if I wake up feeling tired on a Monday, like I've got an appointment with Drew's, like, we, we're going to make this video um, and it doesn't allow me to slack off. So, so um, do you. Do you always film on the Monday, the tipping video on the, the yeah. Drew Footy Show? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good to have um, a schedule, like a strict day, like exactly. a strict time slot to follow, which is always good. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Um, tough question for an 18-year-old man. Uh, I've hit with you a few tonight, but uh, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, yeah, that's a very tough question because I have no idea. Hopefully, no, I'm Yeah, st- no one likes this question. Hopefully, I'm still doing videos. Hopefully... Be nice if I got hundred thousand subscribers. That that'd be nice. I don't know if that will ever happen. I don't think Caden's halfway there, and he's been doing yeah. it for a few years. But I oh, know it'd be nice to uh, have that. It'd be nice also to maybe get a full time job. I don't know what I actually want to do when I'm older. To be yeah. fair, but I don't know. Just yeah, just hopefully going better than what, what I'm right now. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's a great way to put it. I I, yeah. I mean. No 18-year-old knows what he wants to be in five years. Um, and I think it, I think you're in a good position where um, you know, you've know you got the option of going to uni, but you've got this cool, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a hobby. It's almost like a professional hobby that you do on the side that you're passionate yeah. about, that you want to yeah. see through. Um, I think I think we're very lucky to have, both have that um, because that's something a lot of people don't have and, and I, they're probably less happy for it. So, um, no, you, you're killing it, mate. And uh, you're on to bigger and better things for sure. I think uh, you built up a lot of momentum. And... Uh, Good loyal fan base is what, from what I can see. So um, yeah, absolutely smashing it. I got one last question for you for you before we um, before you shoot off. Yep. Being eighteen, mate, it's your draft year. You getting drafted? Am I getting drafted? <laughs> uh, definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. I'm not, not even. I'm not even playing this year. I, I played last year, but then I just was like, because um, that was COVID. I didn't even get to have a game, and um, yeah, I just sort of just didn't. I, I'm not the very. I'm not the most athletic person. I'm not the very very fit i'm quite skinny so i probably get thrown around if i did play in the seniors so maybe take one or two years off come back fit fitter than ever maybe i yep. can uh, get drafted as a mature yep. age recruit in a few years 
Damn, Cardi, you uh, burst my bubble there. I was hoping you'd be the first uh, AFL player I'd have on my channel, but uh, yeah, never mind. Um, no, oh, but mate, in all a good... Get uh, Mitchie Ryan on. Yeah, true. Yeah, is he... Uh, what's his, what is his chance? He plays reasonable level footy, doesn't he? I, I don't know what he plays. I think he... I know a lot of his mates play. I think the Dragons yeah. or whatever it is, but I don't know. I think Mitch is... I think he does play um, in that league, but I, I'm not too sure, but I'm sure he'll... he'll uh, yeah, but be a good footy player. Yeah, I saw him kicking a few clean drop punts in his uh, in his video comparing the footy boots. Uh, yeah, good technique yeah. on the young man, so uh, let's hope yeah. he gets drafted. Um, but let's just say you are getting drafted, Cardi. Um, hypothetical, the draft is on. St Kilda uh, don't have any picks, so can't take you. If you could choose one club to play for other than the Saints, who would it be? What? I'd probably go somewhere in Melbourne. It'd be Fair easier. Enough. Um yeah. Probably someone like the Western Bulldogs. They've yeah, always, nice. I've always had a soft spot for the Bulldogs. They've been probably my second favorite team for a while. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't mind playing with the Bulldogs. I've got a good list. If I got drafted next year, I there's a chance I could be playing for a premiership team. So good yeah, point. You, probably the Bulldogs. Nice one. I'm tempted to say the Doggies as well. Uh, another one that comes to mind is Sydney because uh, I'm sure Sydney's yeah, a lovely Sydney. place to live. Sydney, uh, they've culture. got a lot of young, young talent, good culture. Exactly. And they generally, yeah, draft and develop well. So you feel like yeah. you're half a chance yeah. if you get drafted yeah. to a, uh, oh, I don't a know, what, a Melbourne under Dean Bailey. Like, that's career suicide. <laughs> but um, <laughs> at the moment, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd happily go yeah. to Sydney. Cool, man. Um, all right. So well, that probably wraps up all the questions I've got for you today. Thank you so much for your time. Um, no worries. Wanna, is there anything you'd like to say to the audience uh, or at least maybe something you want to plug and your socials, maybe where they can find you? Um, not really. I mean, you can, you know, if you haven't, uh, check me out. You can look me up on YouTube. I guess Cardman22. Um, I don't know what else to plug though. I don't know if I need to be plugging yeah. anything else on your channel. But no, that's cool, man. I'll leave a link to your script uh, to your channel in the description. And everything like that. So um, I'll make yeah. it easy for people to find you. Um, and then cool. it's worth checking out because you you do a great job um, building some great momentum, as I've said. Super productive, and uh, you set the bar high, bar high for the work rate, mate. So good on you. Cheers. Cool. Yeah, thanks right. for getting me on. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning into another True Footy podcast. Um, appreciate if you could subscribe if you're new. Don't forget these uh, podcasts are also available on Spotify and iTunes as well. Uh, if you don't have the the time or, or the bandwidth to uh, to watch it all on YouTube, um, Cardi, thanks so much for coming on. You're a star.